Good morning, afternoon, and evening to everyone. So glad everyone is here. And uh, there'll be a countdown. Well, first of all, welcome to the um, Coping with COVID, Living in the New Normal. Our uh, proceedings will commence in 10 seconds. There'll be a countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Wherever you are in the world right now, I hope that you are safe and that you're healthy and you're taking care of yourself and others around you. My name is Jayatma Vikramanayaka. I am the United Nations Secretary General's Envoy on Youth. I'm delighted to welcome all of you to this very special episode of our Coping with COVID webinar series on young people and their mental health during COVID-19. Today, we will discuss living in the new normal. As usual, today's session is accessible to young people living with disabilities through real-time captions in English, Spanish, French, Arabic, Russian, and Chinese, and international sign language. To access captioning, please use the link in the slide, bit.ly slash 3C9CMUF. Use the drop down menu to select your preferred language. For international sign language, please use the YouTube stream link also in the slide, bit.ly slash 20Q5000O. What makes this episode so special is that eight young people from around the world will be joined by four dignitaries in this conversation. It is my pleasure to introduce to you United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Her Majesty Queen Mathilde of the Belgians, the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Garebreyesus, the Executive Director of UNICEF, Ms. Henrietta Fo. Since we started our coping with COVID journey back on the 1st of April to support young people cope with this pandemic, we have hosted nine sessions. We heard from young people about the most pressing issues related to their mental health during the pandemic and how they and their communities have been coping. Before we go into today's session, let us take a look at this 14 week coping with COVID journey. Like many other young people, I was suddenly in the middle of an outbreak. Something that I had no clue how to tackle in real life. Your emotional well-being are not necessarily seen to be valid. And so I think it begins with demystifying such thinking, such practices and such systems that are existent in, in our societies. COVID-19 is automatically forcing young LGBTIQ people back into living with their family where they may not be accepted. And this is also creating a very huge impact that um, may lead to mental health. As I grew up, I saw how much it affected me, but I also saw how much it affected my family and uh, the people that I call mine. And uh, when I became an adult, I decided to, to take matters into my hands and, um, and become part of the solutions. So out of my own experiences, things that worked for my mental health, I said I want to share with you is trying to keep myself engaged in daily life.
COVID-19 and responses to it have been quite challenging for the mental well-being of young people. But we have also heard terrific, inspiring stories of young people learning and navigating these challenges successfully to survive and thrive during this crisis. Together, we are living in countries either locked down or slowly opening up again. We all are facing a reality different from what we have ever known. How we adapt and move forward in this new world and new reality is today's focus, living in the new normal under COVID-19. This hour is organized in two parts, each divided into two segments. In each segment, two young people will speak to one of our dignitaries, and at the end of each part, our dignitaries will deliver a specific commitment on what they will do to support young people's mental health. In the first segment, there will also be an opportunity for you in the audience to participate in an interactive poll. So if you have an, another device, bring it closer to you or open a new tab in your browser and stay ready to participate. Let's get started. Now that we have been living with COVID-19 for months, let us understand what the new normal is for everyone. Here to listen in today and share his views on the new normal is the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres. Welcome, Secretary General. It is a pleasure to have you with us. I'm also delighted to introduce two young people, Lucy Fagan from the UK and Marjianta Zuraiman from Indonesia to take us through this segment. Lucy is the Global Focal Point for Health in MGCY and the Chair of the Commonwealth Youth Health Network. Marjianta is the founder of Emancipate Indonesia, spokesperson at the Youth Movement for WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control and a member of UNFPA's Youth Advisory Panel in Indonesia. Over to you, Lucy and Marjianta. Thank you so much, Jay. So what exactly is the new normal in COVID? That's what we want to know today. And what are some of the challenges and opportunities for young people's mental health in this new normal? We want to start off this section by hearing from all of you. So what we want to do is we want to take it to a poll and see. We'd also like all four of the dignitaries here today to join in the poll with us. So make sure to get your answers in. And to get onto the poll, the first thing you need to do is open the link that you should be able to see on your screen, um, which is bit.ly forward slash coping COVID poll. Or you can go to your phone or laptop, open your browser, type www.menti.com, and then type in the following code 304817. In case you are using screen reading software, you can also use SurveyMonkey. The link is surveymonkey.com forward slash r forward slash x9 dn x 5m and the answers to this will be published later in the un youth envoys hashtag coping with covid web page so hopefully you're now all on the poll and you can see the questions just make sure that you've got in and you have the chance to access it and uh, we're going to have about 60 seconds per question so you need to get your responses in quickly we just want to hear your first ideas and responses so Let's start with the very first question. The first question we want to ask is, how are you feeling today? Tell us in one word. Hopefully you can see the box on your screen. Great, I can see some of you are already answering. You can enter a word, but you can also enter a couple more. There's options to, to submit a few more. And just remember, there's no right or wrong answer here. So just type away and click Submit. You can see some things have already started to come through. Okay, so what are we seeing here? Well, it seems like a lot of you are feeling happy and positive and hopeful, and that's great. You can see a lot of people seem to be feeling tired as well. I know it's quite early in the morning for some of you and late for others, so thank you so much for joining. I can see some of you also feel um, scared or concerned, and I think that's exactly why we're here to come together today and to, to talk about some of these things. Um, so really, you know, a very mixed picture in the new normal. I see some of you are feeling motivated, some of you are inspired. This is great. I think so many different things coming through and, and just shows as well, you know, these, these are really complex times we're living in and we might have many different emotions. So hopefully you've got all your answers in and these are continuing to show up, but I think we need to move to the next question. So number number two of our questions today that we want to ask you, is really looking at the new normal now. So question two, and hopefully you can start to see this on your screen now. 
And we want to hear from you. Are any of these eight statements your new normal since COVID-19? Tell us whether you uh, agree or disagree with any of these statements. So worrying about education or finding a job perhaps? Are you taking precautions to be healthy more so perhaps than you did before? Are you finding yourself learning or working online? Possibly acquiring new skills? Connecting with your friends or your family? Probably online. Engaging in your interests and hobbies? Tackling economic hardship? Concerns about increasing inequalities and injustice? Or helping others in need? So you've got 60 seconds to respond. The time's counting down now. So take a look and let us know. Do you agree or do you disagree with these? Great, I think we've got another, let's see, another 20 seconds. Make sure to make sure to select submit. Okay, 88 people. I think we can get a few more responses in. Let's try to get to 100. 10 more seconds. How far can we make it? How many responses can we get in? Okay, 120. So let, let's take a look now. So I think it's clear that so many of you, the majority of you in fact, are taking precautions to be healthy. And this is amazing. This is so important for what we as young people need to be doing right now. But so many other things as well. You're, most of you seem to be learning or working online and finding ways to acquire new skills. And this is changing as we go. So, so the numbers may go up or the numbers may go down. Um, but I can see also many of you are worrying about education or finding a job. And, and as young people, this is, I guess, a really important consequence of what's happening at the moment and, and those concerns when we hear them. Many of you are connecting with your friends and your family online. Most of you are concerned about increasing inequalities and injustice. And these, these are tough times. Some of you are talking about tackling economic hardship some of the challenges and worries that you have, but also it's great to see so many of you talking about actually helping others in need. So yes, these are tough times, but how are you choosing this moment to reach out to others? And I think that's a really, a really positive figure there. Great, so hopefully you've got your answers in now, and that's been really interesting to see some of your new normals. I'm going to pass over to Magenta to take you through the next two questions. Thank you, Lucy. So now we'll go off to the, to the third question. Have young people faced any of these mental well-being challenges during COVID-19? Now you can see the options. Tell us if you agree or disagree. Okay, I see some of you have been trying to answer it. We have anxiety about COVID and its health impacts, uncertainty about future education, jobs, Less human interactions, economic ships, fake news, gender-based violence, separate no separation of home and work, difficulty in accessing mental health services. Yeah. So take your time. See, many of you are actually feeling just like me. We are all anxious, I think. And it's okay, our feelings are always valid especially in this particular situation that we're all facing now. All right, the answers are keep coming in. No separation of home and work. Oh, tell me about that. <laughs> well, all right, um, talking about challenges are never easy. It's okay, take your time. This point actually shows how differently COVID-19 affect our lives. And this is a safe space, so don't worry to say anything you want to say. All right. Keeps increasing. And I think that was it. Time is up. So, yeah, majority agrees with uh, they are feeling anxious, feeling the uncertainty of education, of jobs, lonely, economic hardships. Uh, it really is not an easy time, but it's, it's very good to have you here with us to share with us today. Thank you very much. Now, um, maybe we can proceed to the next question. So this is the last question, so make sure you join with us. Tell us if you think COVID has brought 
in any opportunity for positive change for mental health of young people. We see here the first point. Oh, many of you actually agrees with that. It actually recognized the importance of mental well-being. More open mental health, second in place, which is very much true. Time for, for self-care, great. Caring for friends, family, and others in need, wow. Many of you agreed with this. So many of you actually are more than coping with yourself. You're helping others, which is great. Increase community connectedness, very much. New ways of providing mental health services online or on phone. Young people co-creating solutions is also, many of you agree to that. More of you are joining. This is great. More and more and more people are joining. There is always a rainbow in every storm indeed, and we really appreciate your positivity. Thank you very much for sharing this. This is marvelous. And that was it. I think that was our polling session. Uh, we hope no one was left behind. Thank you for participating. Now we move to the next session, which we all have been waiting for. Lucy, over to you. Thank you, Magenta. So in this session, we've started to hear from you about your new normal. You've highlighted some of the challenges you're facing, but also some of the actions you're taking either to protect yourself or to protect others around you, as well as some of the opportunities you see to build a better future. And we'll be talking more about this throughout the session, about how this new future and this better future could improve the mental health and well-being of young people. But what next? Well, now we actually want to pass the mic over. Um, so Secretary General, Please tell us, what does the phrase new normal in COVID-19 mean to you? Well, I have to say that I adapted relatively easily to this uh, digital virtual world. And I'm very proud uh, because the UN staff was able to adapt uh, and to adapt in a way that kept the UN open for business and effective and active everywhere in the world. But I refuse to consider this a new normal. This is abnormal. For me, human life needs human contact. And I miss my family that I cannot see, I cannot touch. I miss my friends, I miss my colleagues. And uh, we will not have a new normal before we are able to establish that human contact. We need to be able to be with people, to touch people. This is absolutely essential in our life. But uh, this situation has also created in me a more clear conscience of how fragile our world is in relation to pandemic, to climate change, in relation to inequality, and how much we need to build back better and differently and that is where my hope is in the young people because you have been able to adapt more easily than any other to this digital world but you have also a more direct more direct feeling of the need to build back different for the future because to a large extent you will be the major protagonists of that change so no new normal for the moment let's build a new normal of sustainability and uh, inclusivity Thank you so much, Secretary General. I think I think that's a very powerful comment, recognizing the fragility of our world, but also the resilience of young people and our role in steering a positive change in what's a very uncertain future. And something I think will, will resonate really with many of us here today. I know that Magenta has another question for you, so I'm going to pass over to him next for the next question. Right. Um, so, Secretary General, we have just one more question for you. Um, so you mentioned about having um, hope in young people. So I would like to ask, what is the UN's role in supporting the mental well-being of young people? Well, there is uh, one thing that has been in the center of our advocacy and of our action, is to make sure that the world moves into universal health care. And within universal health care, that mental health is given a priority that it has always been denied. The investment in mental health around the world is much lower compared with the needs that really exist. We have uh, recently published a policy brief in relation to COVID-19 and mental health. It is absolutely essential that governments take mental health in the center of their response to COVID-19 with services and, uh, that are available and that uh, uh, are that do not allow for stigma, which is a, an extremely important thing. And there, uh, I think young people are in the center of the needs, but they're also in the center of the innovative responses to mental health, because obviously we cannot use the traditional elements. So this is in the, 
as I said, is a main priority for us. We are doing everything we can to make sure governments assume their responsibilities, but we are very hopeful of the contribution of young people in making sure that new forms of support um, with uh, transformed services and uh, with a total uh, abolition of stigma can change the way the world deals with mental health. And uh, I fully trust your leadership on this. Thank you very much, Secretary. Answer is great to hear what the UN and governments around the globe, every sector has done for young people's mental well-being across all corporations. And it is true, I think we can all agree, young people's involvement as partners is indeed uh, equally important. So thank you very much for your enlightenment. And that was it. That was the first session for our talk today. Um, it was such a fruitful discussion, short but very much precise. We have learned from this session uh, that actually new normal means a lot of different things to young people. Uh, some shared their tips, some are hopeful, um, some full of struggle, uh, but it's okay to be not okay, right? And the UN, young people in every sector in society have their role, and every role is equally important for us to overcome this pandemic. I will give the floor back to Jayathma. And before that, uh, here is a collection of gifts from young people from around the world on what they think of the new normal. Let's have a look. Thank you, Secretary General. Thank you, Lucy and Magianta. And thank you to all the young people who contributed through videos and GIFs. We will now hear about how young people have been adapting positively to this new reality. Here to listen and share her views on positive coping with us is Her Majesty Queen Mathilde of the Belgians. Her Majesty is a UNSDG advocate since 2016, and in this capacity, she has a special emphasis on mental health issues and vulnerable people. Through the COVID-19 pandemic, she has reached out to many young people and their families on mental well-being. Welcome, Your Majesty. I'm also excited to introduce Ziu Kun Wang and Justin Francis, two young people who will be taking us through this segment. Ziu Kun, joining us from China, is a student from Wuhan and a member of the Chinese Young Volunteers Association. And Justin from the Philippines is the director of Youth Voices Count, a network of LGBTIQ youth in Asia Pacific. Ziu Kun and Justin, over to you. Thank you, Jay and I'm really pleased to be here today. We are here to call on young people paying more attention to mental well-being and adapting positively to COVID. And your action really told us that there's always people offering support for us. Since COVID hit the world, a lot of challenges for youth mental well-being came out, and many of us are having worries, feeling anxious and lonely. I have also faced some of the problems uh, in the early days. I worried about the safety of my family and friends. I worried about the future and the relationship between me and my parents became tense. Then I found that as long as I adapted to COVID positively, my life became totally different. I used this time to learn something new. I keep exercising and reading. I had the opportunity to communicate more with people I care about and also with myself. Young people all around the world have taken different actions to adapt positively. And now I'd like to share a video with you to show how they adapt to COVID. Thank you. 
It's amazing to see all the different ways young people are adapting positively. And some of them are really impressive and also creative. As for me, doing volunteer service is also a great way to stay positive during the pandemic. I love the energy this video showed us. I think it taught us that sometimes difficulties also give us time and opportunities to do something new or meaningful. And what matters the most is our attitude. And now I'd like to introduce Her Majesty to Queen Matilda of the Belgians. Thank you for being here and making time to discuss with us today. How young people adapt to the pandemic has a strong impact on their mental well-being, which is really important for everyone's life. Your Majesty, we know that you care a lot about young people. We would love to hear your thoughts on the importance of young people adapt positively to COVID. I'm very impressed by the young people we have just seen and heard. They have managed to deal positively with the stress caused by the pandemic and the lockdown. They really deserve our admiration and our congratulations for reaching out to help other young people and other members of their community. We, we know that many people were not as resilient or felt more vulnerable Young people, helping young people is essential. I hope all of us will come out of this crisis feeling stronger. Let us continue to support each other, improve the awareness and access to mental health support and services, which will also remain crucial. We will also need to build back better mental well-being by improving systemic and sustained resilience among young people. Education has an important role to play in this regard. Thank you so much, Your Majesty. Um, this is Justin from the Philippines. Uh, good evening from my side of the world. Uh, young people nowadays are our frontliners in the continued response on the COVID-19 pandemic. Our work in Asia Pacific, for example, has definitely highlighted that communities affected are taking the response into their own hands. Youth, Youth Voices Counts COVID, uh, hashtag coping with COVID discussion paper has shown that LGBTIQ adolescents and youth are disproportionately affected by COVID-19 and the quarantine measures but they continue to persevere and are resilient in their leadership to the communities that they belong to. My second question for you, Your Majesty, can you tell us about your work on mental health and the support that you provide to young people? First, I want to fighting the stigma, which still prevents too many people from seeking help. Regarding COVID-19, I want to help making more visible the hidden social consequences of the pandemic. I always try to reach those who are most in need because of their psycho psychological vulnerability, often linked to family issues and poverty. And with my own foundation, we reacted immediately and launched a call for action focused on the resilience of young people promoting intergenerational communication about the pandemic is also important. Young people reaching out to elderly people can help building up resilience on both sides. I'm also concerned about the effects 
of the closure of schools, on the continuity of education, but also on the psychological well-being of children and young people in the long term. Thank you so much, Your Majesty. As an LGBT activist and a young person, I know how important allyship is. Uh, COVID-19 has not broken our health system, but rather a system uh, that requires a lot of collective work. With the current trend of COVID-19 in our communities, we are slowly realizing that much work is bridge the gap in there for communities. The work of Her Majesty Queen Mathilde is just one of the many initiatives that deserve acknowledgement. However, only with collective work by all sectors, by civil society, by governments, by United Nations, academia, and many more, um, many more sectors can we truly be responsive and efficient in addressing the needs of the most marginalized and affected communities. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time and for this segment. Now back to you, Jay. Thank you, Your Majesty. Thank you, Zukun and Justin. I would now like to ask the Secretary General and Her Majesty the Queen to share with us their commitment on how they will support young people's mental health going forward. Over to you, Secretary General, to present your commitment first. The United Nations is strongly committed to creating a world in which every young person everywhere has someone to turn to for psychological support. A world where policies are sensitive to young people's needs, where services are expanded, accessible, stigma-free and trustworthy, and where young people are empowered and design and deliver the change and solutions they need. Thank That's you very much. Commitment. Thank you very much, Secretary General. We will be holding you accountable for that commitment for sure. And then I turn to Her Majesty the Queen uh, to share with us her commitment as well. We can use the momentum created by the mobilization around COVID-19 to accelerate the mobilization around mental health and well-being. We need to work on all fronts, prevention, building resilience, promoting awareness, fighting the stigma, and guaranteeing access for all to counseling and care. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Majesty. With that, we wrap up our first segment, and I thank the Secretary General, Her Majesty, Zyukun, Justin, uh, Magenta, and Lucy for joining us for this, this portion of our program. Um, and I know that the Secretary General will have to leave soon for another commitment, so we really appreciate you staying through to the end of this segment, Secretary General. Thank you very much. So with that, we are now moving to the second part of today's session, and we will first hear what actions young people are expecting from decision makers for their mental health. Joining us is the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Adhanam Garebreyesus. Welcome, Dr. Tedros. I'm delighted to introduce also Grace Gatera and Ali Ahmed Hafi, who will take us through this segment. Grace from Rwanda is a mental health advocate working with My Mind, Our Humanity, and she's with the Lancelot Global Mental Health Commission's Youth Champions. Ali from Iran is a budding physician and is the president of the Iranian Medical Students Association. Grace and Ali, over to you. It's late, actually. No. We are on the second. Okay. They revised this. We, we have higher Grace. Grace and I'll go to you. Um, I'm super pleased to be here today to talk about what young people want decision makers to do for the mental well-being of youths. It is incredible to have this platform, and I'm really thankful to those who have come before us and those who are here who have worked tirelessly to make this possible. Seriously, thank you. Now, I'd like to share a video with you to know for you to know more about what young people want during the this pandemic and also their contributions. Thank you. Mental illness eats you alive. There are many people that fight this battle every day. We need to pay attention, take action and help
also promoting justice in our communities so that we can live happily, healthy, practicing our cultures and speaking our languages like our ancestors did. It is always inspiring to hear young people speak and to hear them share. And it's also important for them to point out the gaps that need to be filled regarding mental health in their context. As a young person, I truly believe that we are the now. And so listening to us and not only listening, but acting on our asks is important and very urgent. That being said, I'd like you to I'd like to introduce the, the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros. Dr. Tedros, thank you for being here with us today. My first question for you is, what is the shift or action needed on ground to make mental health services accessible to young people? Makuru, uh, Grace. Mimesa. Murakoze Chane, for your question, and also for your wonderful work. And um, um, uh, this is actually a great opportunity. And thank you, Jatma, for uh, bringing us all uh, together. And I would like to appreciate also the Secretary General. I think he left, but after I became DG, the first thing we discussed, the first time I met him, the first thing we discussed was mental health. I know his uh, commitment on mental health, incredible commitment he has. So I would like to say that, and um, you know, his presence today means also a lot. And um, he he truly is committed to uh, mental health, and we're very fortunate to have him. Um, this question is a very important uh, question, Grace. As as you say, COVID nineteen is affecting young people's health and well being in so many ways, uh, not the least of which is their mental health. And time and again, uh, young people have shown that they know how to raise awareness and destigmatize issues on mental health needs. So to make mental health services available to all, we must do several things. Uh, first, young people and their families must be part of the conversation from the beginning, from the design of programs uh, to their implementation. Uh, second, Governments must mainstream mental health promotion and services for young people and their families throughout health systems and social programs, uh, ranging from primary health care uh, to schools. Third, while COVID-19 is a crisis, it's also an opportunity to learn and improve uh, how we do things. I have just seen the video of, uh, you know, earlier. Uh, there are challenges, of course, but many young people are taking them as opportunities. Uh, we should use this moment to strengthen uh, care services for adolescent uh, mental health. Murakoze Chane again. Thank you, Dr. Tedros, for your response. I'm Ali Amir Kafir from Iran, and the need for this shift that you've mentioned is an issue I've been confronting in my personal experience as a medical student in the hospital and also as a young public health activist in the society, I felt the importance for this change. And now I have another question to ask from you. What can WHO and other UN agencies do to make this shift a reality? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ali. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, you have identified one of the greatest challenges uh, for governments uh, to fully integrate mental health services for young people across all their sectors. We need increased investment and political commitment. Of course, the first one is political commitment, because if there is political commitment, it leads into significant investment. 
Uh, WHO is working closely with young people, policy makers, and other UN agencies and partners to mainstream mental health promotion, prevention, and care through health, education, social services, and digital platforms. Uh, we must keep supporting and engaging with government so that youth and families remain at the center of their decision-making uh, processes. Uh, so I think more commitment uh, from all is, is very important. But at the same time, uh, I think the role of youth is, is crucial uh, to make this happen. Uh, you have to continue uh, to advocate uh, I, I don't uh, expect the youth to be just waiting from UN agents or others, uh, you know, to uh, happen something. Uh, you can uh, make it happen, happen too. So your partners and also uh, partners with responsibility, and that's how uh, you should you should you should feel. Uh, you should feel as owners of of uh, uh, this program. And not really, mere, you know, uh, waiting for, for from others to give you uh, anything. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Tedros, for your incredible answers, and thank you so much, Grace. Yes, as Dr. Tedros mentioned, youth influence the health of the society just as they're influenced by it. Meanwhile, young people have some demands in order to fulfill their responsibilities. This is what decision makers should consider. First, hear the opinions and perspective of the youths, and second, let them be engaged meaningfully in actions and decision-making processes. This is what we call it meaningful youth participation. And hopefully WHO and other UN agencies are the peer for making a change. And by this, I would like to thank you everyone for being with us in this segment. Now I give the floor back to Jay. Thank you very much, Ali. Thank you, Dr. Tedros. Thank you, Grace. We will now hear how young people have been contributing to shape the mental well-being response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Joining us for this segment is the Executive Director of UNICEF, Ms. Henrietta Fo. Welcome, Henrietta, and thank you so much for being with us today. I'm happy to introduce Renata Samuels and Victor Anthony Lopez Carmen, who will be taking us through this segment. Renata is with the Department of Youth Services of the Government of Belize, and Vector is a member of the Crow Creek Sioux tribe and part of the Global Indigenous Youth Caucus. Welcome, Renata and Victor. Over to you. Thank you, Jay. I hope everyone is doing well this morning or afternoon or night, whatever time it is for them. Um, as we know, COVID came abroad and many suffered the rude awakening of a new normal. Young people being brave, brilliant, and bold individuals they are, took many different actions to promote safe environments for their peers and themselves. These actions were to promote health care both physically and mentally. It's completely imperative that young people are given the platforms they need to share their spark and ignite the plans that have set they've set out for us all. So here is a short video um, featuring youth and what they're doing, their role, and what they believe they can bring to the table. Remember while watching the video, there's nothing for you without you. Hello, my name is Tara, I'm 17 and from Montenegro. The one thing I have been doing during this quarantine is catching up with my friends online and being each other's mental support, while of course respecting the adopted measures in order to remain healthy and safe. How do you think young people can help each other during this crisis? Giving youth the opportunity and the space to show how useful we are because we are talented, we have agency, we are committed, we are, we are proactive and we should give back all of these great skills to our communities. The energy and the innovation and creativity that youth always incorporate in their own actions to both protect and promote the health of our community. That means creativity and collaboration. It's all about finding innovative solutions to different challenges and working on them together. Because together, 
we're stronger. I just I just love the energy that this video captures and I'm so grateful that we have the UNICEF executive director Henrietta for today with us. We thank you so much for listening, for caring and for making the time to engage in this discussion with us. So my first question is, why do you feel that this partnership with young people is important in COVID in the COVID-19 response and recovery? Uh, so, Renata, thank you. I love your comment about young people being brave, brilliant, and bold. And that's absolutely it. As Dr. Tedros was saying, you've got the power. So this is the time to use that power and your bold and brilliant selves to make sure that you're looking after yourselves and looking after your communities. It's um. It is something that belongs together. They're two halves of a whole. So as you look at it, there are lots of ways that you can do it. So in this video, there are creators and innovators and advocates and community workers. You're often on the front lines and you're helping in so many ways. So in Jordan, there's a program where the young people got together and they began delivering groceries to the older people who were in need. There are many people in the community who need your help. So volunteering is important. Um, in Cote d'Ivoire, there is a group that has put together um, radio and communication shows where they can talk about what you're doing in the time of COVID, how to learn, how to look after yourselves. So these are wonderful platforms. So I'm delighted to be part of hashtag coping with COVID series. Um, it's, it's very important that we all engage. So thank you, Renata. Thank you so much, uh, Director, for, for highlighting the power of youth around the world. Considering all that young people bring to the table, how do you think organizations like UNICEF can partner with us to ensure that our mental health and well-being are a central part of COVID-19 response and recovery. I may have lost the end of your comment, but um, do you want to finish? <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I'm going to assume that um, you're thinking about how we can engage young people. Cool. <laughs> All right. So, so thank you. So, so. So I think number one is um, that we want you to share your views and you can do this in lots of platforms, but let me mention one called you report and you report right now involves 11 million young people in 63 countries. And it's a mobile platform in which we'll ask you questions and we'll ask you to contribute. Um, and you can do it on a wide variety of subjects. So there are programs in Nigeria, in Jamaica, in Brazil, in South Africa, in Burundi, to name just a few. Uh, we've also done some polling, uh, Victor, in uh, Latin America, where we've talked about uh, what young people are feeling, because it's very important that we don't talk about you. We talk 
with you and that you talk with us. So we hear a lot about fear and anxiety and depression, which is also what came out in our early polls. Um, many young people are worried about going back to school. 79% uh, uh, reported that. And um, only half, a little less than half, felt that they were well informed about COVID. So we know that school is important. We know that we must go back to school. So maybe there's a way to help your school be ready for opening in the fall. If one is has the chance to volunteer, try to get the schools up and running. And then second, be there for someone. Be a friend, be a mentor, be a peer supporter. Keep your friends and family close. You've been hearing that in this session. It's really important. Just simply be a good friend. And third, help us to be inclusive. Though there are many young people who are not connected, they're not as lucky as many of you. So help us bridge this gap. And Victor, in your community, I know you're doing this. So let's create opportunities for the young in all of our communities. Back over to you, Victor. Victor has a weak connection. Perhaps somebody can fill in for Victor. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Henrietta. And I think Victor is going through, through some technical difficulties, so let me let me take it. But but this is also a really good indication that not all young people have equal access to you know even internet and opportunities. So uh, we have to make sure in our work as the UN and as youth organizations that we try to reach out to young people who do not have the same access like us. Um, and it's our responsibility. So with that, I'm now going to go back to Dr. Tredros for his commitment on youth and mental health. Dr. Tedros, the floor is yours to present your commitment for youth and mental health. Oh, sorry. You know, I was on mute. I didn't. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes. So th thank you so much. I said I will repeat myself. Thank you so much, Jatma, again. And thank you also, my sister Henrietta, for your leadership. Thank you for your uh, excellent uh, intervention and your commitment to, to the youth. Um, COVID-19 is not only a physical health issue, it also affects mental health. And I think many of our young people have said it very, very well. The mental health needs of young people need to be cared for and responded to by mainstreaming mental health services across society. I'm speaking not only to our leaders at the national and community level, but also to young people everywhere who have a vital role to play in making sure that we follow through on our commitments. Commitments should be realized. There is no help without mental health. I thank you. Again, thank you so much. It's a great honor to uh, join you uh, today. Thank you very much, Dr. Tedros. And you have given us a really nice quote there. There's no health without mental health. Thank you for your yes. commitment. Um, thank you. Henrietta, over to you to present your commitment for youth and mental health as well. Very much, Chiatma. With the Secretary General and uh, Her Majesty the Queen and Dr. Tedros and you, Chiatma, that this will be a top priority for us. Mental health and psychosocial support will be deeply ingrained in all of our programs. And we will engage young people, these brave, brilliant and bold selves that you all are. We will also make sure that we are talking about good policies and good services in every country. And Dr. Tedros and we do this in many countries, but it has to be part of a primary health care system. May I also just invite all of you to join us, join you report, join the United Nations. And Jay Asma, thank you very much for hosting this. 
Thank you, Dr. Teros. Thank you, Henrietta. And thank you once again to all our amazing participants today. Lucy, Magianta, Zyukun, Justin, Grace, Ali, Renata, Victor. Thank you for leading us through today's sessions and also not just bringing your voice, but collecting the voices of your peers and bringing them to us through videos, GIFs, and so many creative ways. A big thank you to our dignitaries, the Secretary General, Your Majesty the Queen, Director General Dr. Tedros, Executive Director Four. Thank you for your time, your presence. Thank you for listening to young people's stories. And thank you for your ongoing commitment to ensure that young people can live in a world where they have equal access to quality mental health services and the care that they need. I would also like to take this moment to thank the team coping with COVID, a 161 people strong team of 45 young speakers, 52 contributors, and a 64 strong organizing team from my office, UNICEF, WHO, and the wider UN family. This series has been possible only because of you. And finally, our sincere thanks to every one of you out there. Thank you for sharing the past months with us. Thank you for sharing your feelings with us. Thank you for sharing your struggles, your strength, your success, and also your resilience. You have inspired all of us and we will continue, as Henrietta said, as Dr. Tedros said, as the UN to advocate for the full realization of your potential by taking care of your mental health. Thank you, stay safe and stay healthy. Okay, uh, our event is going to be ending in 20 seconds. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today for the coping with COVID, living in the new normal. Our countdown will begin now. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Signing off. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>